What's going on guys in today's video we're gonna be diving deep into Instagram DM outreach I brought on Dylan Wilson. He's the founder of RSC and Wilson media He's you know sent hundreds of thousands of Instagram DMS So he knows what he's talking about and we're gonna be getting deep and technical Sweet awesome. Well before I get into you know how My VAs that I pay five dollars an hour are booking more appointments a day than you've ever booked in your life Well at least for probably a lot of people if you're watching this video um, I'll give you a quick backstory on me. I started my SMMA back in 2019. I dropped out of university. I was making about two, three hundred dollars a month as a video editor. 18 months later, and don't ask me how I did it because still to this day I don't fully understand. I scaled the company up to serve over 206 clients. However, it was very low ticket and it was a disaster. So that's when I made the transition to go online. I did a done for you sales agency, and then after getting into some hot water, which we'll save that for another story. I ended up shutting that down and finding fulfillment through partnering with other agency owners and helping them scale. And one of those people that I partnered while I was doing this, a lot of people who are consuming the YouTube content may be familiar with because that is Tony Lee. So for those of you that don't know Tony Lee's story, he uh, went from zero to about $17,000 a month in about a 90 day span and he generated all but a couple clients through Instagram DM. So working through Tony, I was able to see the ins and outs of how VA outreach and you know how the whole booking appointments and setting appointments through Instagram works. And then I took what we did with Tony and I built out a VA school, a school for $5 an hour VAs. And then I ran a bunch of VAs through this school. I taught them how to do the exact same techniques that Tony was doing. I placed these VAs for other people that I work with. And we have people like Kristen Rodriguez who runs another real estate agency and I think it was last Sunday, he booked seven appointments, just last Sunday, using through his VAs and through his Instagram. Yeah, in one day, just yeah. seven appointments in one day, right? And that's where I came up with that crazy headline. And another person that I work with, his name's Martin and Eon, they don't even run an agency. They run a fitness coaching company. They target entrepreneurs and they use these VAs to book, to basically grow their company. So. What I've done for you guys is I've built out a framework. So right here, Dylan's prepared a presentation for us. We're going to be going, you know, walking you guys through step by step on, you know, how you can implement the strategy. So let's dive right in. Alrighty, boys. So how one five dollar an hour VA books one to seven appointments per day through Instagram. So I'm going to make a quick disclaimer and this might trigger a couple of you guys because I've talk to enough people in this space to know that everyone thinks they're a lion even though most of them are sheep and what I mean by this is you know a lion thinks for himself he makes his own decisions he doesn't just follow what the masses are doing and the point of this presentation isn't to give you the next big fancy outreach script and hook and pitch and script it's to teach you the psychological processes behind what goes into a successful outreach campaign so you can take these learnings and apply it to every single niche just like we were able to do it in the real estate niche, in the car detailing niche, and in the fitness coaching niche and tons of other niches that we have worked with through the RSC community, but that's a whole other topic. So getting into it, I'm going to go over three key things here. So number one is the backdoor approach to set up your account and two to five X your response rate. The second thing is the psychological messaging sequence used to generate easy leads. And the third is the secret to booking 50% of Instagram leads. So before I share how to set up your account, I need to tell you guys a quick story here. So when I first started doing my Instagram outreach for my gym agency, this is what my outreach accounts looked like. It said, I work with Fit Bros to add $10,000 to their biz in 90 days or I refund them. And then it was a photo of me looking professional, you know, pretending that I knew what I was talking about. And the second one, it was even worse. It was a photo of my agency logo and just marketing, 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 marketing. The problem is when I reached out to people, I didn't know this at the time, but now in hindsight, I realized that every time I reached out to somebody, they would click on my profile and be like, damn, this guy is trying to sell me something. And so their guard would go up and I, all I got was no's, 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 no's. And as you can see here, the first one had a roughly 2% response rate and the second one had a roughly 1% response rate. Now, with my current Instagram account, whenever I do outreach, you know, if I'm doing like outreach for, you know, client generation, I'll generate a six to 10% response rate. Now, when I do outreach to like other people in the industry, I'll get like 60, 70, 80% response rate because when I'm presented in this kind of manner, it does not look like I'm trying to sell anything. I look like a normal human being. 
and normal human being is what we're going for. So when it comes to setting up your profile picture, the first thing, the key to a successful outreach campaign is making your photo casual and appear as though you're a potential lead slash customer to your niche. So think about it. If I'm a gym owner, which one of these people would I rather talk to? The person on the left who looks like they may be interested in you know, finding a new gym or talking about workouts or something like that, or the person on the right who may be interested in trying to sell them lead generation services. Obviously, you would rather engage in the conversation with the person on the left, and that is exactly why this is the first step in order to increasing your response rate and setting up your account for a successful Instagram outreach campaign. The second thing is the bio. So the key to a successful Instagram bio is not making it salesy. Forget the I help X achieve Y. We want to appear neutral, authentic, and invite people into our story. So before I explain how to create the perfect bio, let me say that you do not need to flex achievements to try and prove your authority, fit lead magnets and all that kind of stuff, or state crazy marketing lingo. Don't do this. Simply, when writing your bio, you want to make it seem to yourself. You want to make it seem like you are a real person. So, with some examples of this, is when you say things such as sharing lessons as I learned them on entrepreneurships as I grow my business. Quotes, entrepreneur line hobby. A good way, a good rule of thumb that you can do is go to your friends' accounts who do not run businesses and look at their Instagram bios. Because those are everyday people being everyday people. And if we want to pretend that we're an everyday person to slide into the back door of our prospects' DMs, that is what we want to look like. Getting into stories and posts, just share real photos and stories from your real life. If you have valuable case studies, valuable you know, testimonials, yes, you can include that, but do not make your Instagram look like a sales presentation because otherwise that will just trigger sales resistance. And in the beginning, we're just trying to start a conversation. Of course, your prospect is going to see your case studies before they hop on a call with you. Of course, they're going to know about the guarantees before you even attempt to close them, but now is not the time to introduce that information to them because otherwise it will trigger sales resistance because they've seen it all before. The next thing is the outreach script. So, Gershon Dollywall. Jackson and I know Gershon very well. He's 15 years old. He used to send this long outreach script like many of us do, and instead he switched it to using what we call like the psychological way of generating easy leads through Instagram outreach, and then he was able to, oh, right now he makes about $5,000 a month, 15 years old. So if that's not impressive, I don't know what else to say. But All through Instagram outreach. Yeah, he generates his lead through Instagram outreach. And, and this guy has worked with some big, big names. I'm talking Sanders big Sage. names like that you see on YouTube ads all the time. I'll just leave it at that for now. He's a 15 years old, working with the guys, selling you. He's creating the marketing assets that are selling you these programs. And he's 15 years old, and this is how he gets those people to work with, okay? So the first one is a response-provoking message, okay? One example of that is, you know, hey, do you have a TikTok account if you were promoting some sort of TikTok services? Maybe you're in the real estate niche. Do you work with buyers or sellers? Something that is going to provoke a response from your lead. There's actually a story from a book called Presuasion. And basically it was this company who was trying to get samples of their energy drink. And they were going out to the public and they were saying, hey, can you please sample my drink? And about 10% of people were saying yes. That means 90% of people were saying no. Unfortunately, they were running into trouble because they weren't getting the data that they had and the campaign was going to be much more expensive and it wasn't going to be a success. So what they did to solve the campaign was they instead asked, hey, do you consider yourself an adventurous person? All the people were like, yeah, I consider myself an adventurous person. And then from there they said, okay, perfect. Well, you want to try this new energy drink. Their response rate went from like 10% to 80%. You can read the whole story in the book Persuasion. Highly recommend that book as a side note. But that is why you want to you know, first engage your client in or your prospect in a conversation before you pitch them. It doesn't have to be the long you know, conversational style of selling. You're just wasting your time and that's not scalable. But a simple message to get them to open up their door before you pitch them is highly recommended. And then when you get to the pitch, there's three types of pitches that I usually go for. Number one is the best one, it's the case study pitch. So you basically say, hey, I worked with X to produce Y result using insert your system. Can I show you the system free of charge? That's as simple as it gets. Okay? Create your own variation of that dependent on your case studies. Another one 
which is really good, is the full transparency one. And that is when you say, hey, full transparency, I'm an 18 year old entrepreneur, I'm trying to go my business, and I'm struggling to you know, build relationships with people because most people have been scammed before, so I'd love to work for free and just show you, you know, the results that I can get. I'm not even looking for money, just looking for a testimonial. That one has been crushing. That was actually one of the ones that I used to get my agency off the ground. And then the third one, which works really well, and actually that person who books seven appointments a day, this is the one that he uses. He uses the story selling pitch. So basically he tells a short story. And he says, you know, after getting into response, he says, hey, well, I actually used to work for my mom, calling up leads for her brokerage. I realized that the lead quality sucked, so I developed a system that only sent my mom high quality leads. Can I show you the system? And you introduce your solution or your pitch or your service with a story to uh, pre preframe the conversation. Then once you've gotten that pitch out, the next thing that you'd want to do is give them a phone call. Okay? This is very important. As long as they don't say no, you call them. I'll get into more of what you want to say on the phone, but let's get through the follow-ups here. So the first follow-up is a bump. Okay? Hey, just bumping this back up to the top of your inbox. The second follow-up is a joke. This Mark my words right now. This is going to be the most valuable follow-up that you do. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. If it's not, send me a message on Instagram at I'm Dylan Wilson. I'll send you $100 because I lied to you. So what you want to do is you want to say, hey, I noticed you left my offer on red. And then insert, was it, you know, some characteristic about you? So again, that guy Christian who booked seven appointments last Sunday, he says, hey, I noticed you left my offer on red. Is it my mustache? Because he's got this like big, ugly mustache. Another guy says, hey, I know he's left my offer on red. Is it because my shorts are too high? Because his profile photo is a photo of him golfing. He's got like these high shorts. We make fun of him for that all the time. And that response, like saying that, generates a lot of responses because people in, in appreciate the humor. By that time, it's your second follow-up, so they know you're a real person. And that is a really good way to get that response so you can give them the phone call. The last one is the Hail Mary one. So this is basically when you introduce scarcity and then you tell them that, hey, like, listen, this is your last chance of working with me, basically. So if I was in the real estate niche, I would hit up people and I'd be like, hey, uh, just a heads up, or hey, I apologize for being persistent. Just wanted to let you know that I am in talks with another agent in your area and they are pretty keen. So I figured out of courtesy, I would reach out to you one last time just to see if you had any potential interest. Either way, I'd appreciate a response. And that's kind of like the Hail Mary play. You get a good amount of responses to that as well. Getting into the next. So just to recap, oh, go. Just to recap, we send them we send them one message that's contextualized to the niche. That's a question, just to get them engaged yeah. and invested in the conversation. Yeah. And then we go for the pitch. Yeah. Okay. And then instead of replying to the pitch to get a higher booking rate, we want to call them immediately. Yeah. Right. As soon as they get that response, and you're about to get into that, and then you know three follow-ups and follow-ups are very important and the bump the joke hail yep. mary yeah cool 100 percent. so next stage as you can read the words on the screen okay the amount of times first of all if i had a hundred dollar bill for every time somebody came to me and said dylan i've sent 50 outreach messages and i don't have a client yet i need to change my script i need to switch my niche whatever I probably wouldn't be in business right now. I'd probably have, you know, as Nick Cosman would say, reached escape velocity, which is when you have about $4 million and you just live off of your investments. So the point is, you are going to fail if you do not send at least, like, at least 1,000 messages and your follow-ups. On the flip, if you send 1,000 messages plus follow-ups, I guarantee one to three clients, easy, for sure. No question about it. If you have half a brain and you send 1,000 messages and you have a half decent script and your follow ups, it becomes very unreasonable to not have clients. Listen to this. That's what it is. Yeah. Before I joined RST, I had no clue to make any fucking money. And then I seen everybody, people just like me, making money by just putting in work. So I decided I'm going to put my head down, work, and boom. And the just reason I showed you that is because one of the best ways today. to make sure that you do your outreach is to find an accountability partner. Go to a friend, go to somebody else, go to somebody that you met on Discord that you have a little bit of trust with and say, hey, we're both going to send 50 outreach messages a day. If we ever miss a day, I'll send you 
whatever mind trick you have to pay to play on yourself in order to send your outreach, do it because I promise you all you have to do is send 1,000 to 1,500 messages and your agency will be off the ground and everything that you want in life will become a reality. So another thing that is super powerful is to put your money where your mouth is, right? Whether you pay for a program, like think about it, like most of the programs that you're paying for, all the information is on YouTube. The only reason that you pay, the only reason that they work is because you pay for it, so now like, you have to follow it. Like if you had to pay to watch YouTube, think about how many more, you know, how, how much more successful you'd be, right? Imagine if you had to pay to watch that video that you watched. You'd probably then want to take notes on that video and then you'd probably go take action on it. And that is the power, that's, that is the psychological power that money has on your system. Now the next question is, well, but Dylan, my account gets banned. So there's two things that you can do to solve this issue. Number one is send your outreach messages by responding to somebody's story or their highlights. Instagram treats it different in the algorithm and you can get a lot more outreach messages out if you do it that way. The second thing that you can do is do your follow-ups. Most people do not do their follow-ups and you can see this chart, this was taken off LinkedIn, this is my chart, but you can see this chart that if I was in this hypothetical situation to only send this message, which is what most people do, right? I would have lost all these contacts. I would have never talk, spoken to all of these leads, right? And with your follow-ups, that doesn't count against your Instagram action ban. So you can send as many follow-ups as you want as long as you've already engaged in that conversation with that lead and you can increase the amount of total responses that you get without putting your account at risk of getting banned. Last thing here, calling the leads, okay? So this is the secret. This is how Tony did it. He didn't, it wasn't like, yes, the outreach scripts increase the chances and all that kind of stuff. The biggest lever that you can pull by far is calling your leads. So what this looks like, first of all, like I said earlier, do not send appointments in the DMs. And as soon as you get a response, other than no, call your lead and book them in over the phone. But what do I do if they ask a question? They're interested. So call them, right? As long as they don't say no, they're interested. They just have objections, they're concerns, they don't trust you, all this kind of stuff, and that can all be overcome over the phone call. It is very, very, very difficult to overcome objections in the DMs. So here is a rough script. Remember, you're a lion, not a sheep. Say, so do not follow this word for word. This is a rough guideline of what to say over the phone. Do not even create a script for your phone call because you'll sound like a robot, and any business owner worth working with will know that you're reading a script. And if they don't know that you're working with a script, well, they're probably a dumb business owner and you do not want to work with them. So that's an easy rule of thumb to follow too. But hey name, hey name, this is you know my name. Uh, we connected over Instagram in regards to, you know, in regards to me placing ads and then using an automated prospecting system. Does that ring a bell? Okay, the next question that you do say, and this is a very important one, I learned this from Jeremy Lee Miner. Um, basically what you do is you say, okay, well, do you already have you know, what you do in place? Or are you still open to you know, hearing ways to possibly generate results that you promised them that you could deliver? And the reason that you ask that question is when you open the door for your prospect and say, hey, like, if you wanna leave, you can leave, it shows that you're detached from the sale. It shows that you're detached from the outcome and you're only gonna continue this conversation if you can actually provide any value to them. The second thing that it does is it gets them to verbally say, to you, but more importantly to themselves, yes, I'm still looking to hear about how you can X for me. The next stage of the, of the conversation, okay, well I can tell you a little bit about what I reached out to you for. Insert your backstory. The next slide we go into how to create a backstory. Then talk about your service delivery. Okay, this is what I do, this is how I do it. Then you wanna ask them, does it sound like it could potentially help your business? Always use neutral language in the earlier processes of the sales so we don't trigger any sales resistance then you can schedule in a Zoom call from there. The backstory formula is who you are. So hey, uh, you know, I'm Jackson, I'm a da 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 da, hey, I'm Dylan, I'm a 19 year old. You know, just be super honest and super authentic with who you are, right? The reason why it's so easy to work with family and friends is because they already know and they already trust you, they already know who you are. So you need to, before you pitch, before you do anything, you need to share your story and share who you are because if they don't know who you are, you know, they're not gonna listen to what you have today. Look at Alex Ramosi, right? If Alex Ramosi walked into this boardroom that I'm sitting in right now, 
If Alex Ramosi walked into this boardroom, because I know who he is and I know who his story, and he sat down in this chair beside me and he started talking to me, I would listen to everything that he had to say and I would write it down and I would implement it to my, action, my business immediately because I know his story. On the flip, if, my da- if Alex Ramosi walked into my dad's company's boardroom, who doesn't even have YouTube, he, they would probably kick him out for wearing Crocs. They wouldn't hear a word that he has to say. <laughs> because they don't know his story. So it doesn't matter who you are, you always want to introduce your story to people. Then you can talk about your goals, the problem that you faced, your attempts to achieve these desired results, and this is Storytelling 101. If you want to learn more about this, check out Russell Brunson, Expert Secrets. There's a whole book on this stuff. So you're telling me if I don't have any case studies and I'm new, I shouldn't lie about having case studies and having dozens of years of experience. Yeah, so you hear that, guys? Yes. <laughs> like people will respect you a lot more. Like if you like, they can tell when you're not being authentic. Like if they ask for case studies and you you say yes and you know you don't have any, like you're just killing the deal. Like people will respect you so much if you just tell your story. Hey, I'm new and new to this. You know, I'm just trying out entrepreneurship, um, and they'll respect you a lot more in, instead of you trying to you know fake experience and fake case studies. Right. Yes. 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 I got. A, I had a call with a guy yesterday, a young kid. He's 17 years old, lives in Argentina. He's a very hardworking, transparent, honest kid. And I hopped on a call with him, and I told him about, I introduced this formula to him. And his biggest concern was that he has an accent, and he's in a relatively foreign country, considering he's working with North American businesses. And I told him, hey, for your next call, and he didn't have any clients, no paying clients. I said, for your next call, go on there. Tell them exactly who you are. Tell them that you are a young Argentinian kid who's trying to grow their business, but you're struggling because nobody you know, trusts you with an accent like this. You know, and you, you're struggling to you know, connect with people because they judge you for your accent, and they judge you for your age. And just lay the book, spill the beans, everything that you've told me, because he was telling me all of it. Tell that to your next prospect. Hops on a call. Doesn't have a case study, doesn't have past client experiences, and nothing closed him on a 15% commission only deal. No, he didn't rinse them for $1,500 a month because that would be unreasonable to expect. But he closed them. It was like a $500 ad spend, plus he personally gets 15% of every deal that company does. And if he does a good job, they'll probably do 10 to 20 deals a month. Just by telling him story, his story. That is the power of this. So I hope you guys enjoyed that presentation. Now I'm going to ask Dylan a couple of questions, you know, very popular questions get asked about Instagram outreach. So the first one is if someone wants to, you know, so first off is how many DMs should you be sending per day? 50 per day per account. Okay. And if someone wanted to scale, what would they, how would they go about that? If they wanted to do more than buy a second account or just create a second account. Okay. As you want to do this, like at scale, scale, mm-hmm. like some people I know will have like 10 Instagram accounts mm-hmm. running. At that point, you want to start buying aged accounts. But in the beginning, you can just go on Instagram and mm-hmm. set up a second account. Or what a lot of you guys have is you already have aged accounts because you have like an agency account. Well, when was the last time your agency account got you any clients? Mm-hmm. Probably not, right? So why don't you just convert that to an outreach account, at least for the time being? Okay. And obviously it depends on you know the niche the offer there's a lot of variables but what are like the benchmark numbers in terms of reply rate and conversion rate what should people be aiming for um, five percent in general our rule of thumb is rate, that if you're booking. for the amount of people that for if you contact 100 people you should have at least five demo calls booked mm-hmm. and if you don't then cool. you're probably and doing something wrong when Okay. And when you say to call these leads, that's over the phone, not Instagram's voice feature. That's a very good question. Ideally, it's over the phone. However, there's Mm -hmm. one nuance to that. Okay. First of all, if you're in any European country or any country other than North America and you're targeting people in North America or vice versa, if you're in North America and you're targeting people in Europe, calling from your cell phone isn't ideal because it's gonna you know, come up as a super weird number. Like personally, anytime I get a call from somebody in Europe, I don't respond. 
So in circumstances like that, mm -hmm. there's two things that you can do. The best option that you can do is you go high level and just buy Twilio accounts in other parts of the world and just call from your go high level number. Mm -hmm. And if you're gonna go that route, then what I would do is I would take it a step further and setting up you know, multiple different Twilio numbers, like even within the states. When I get calls from mm -hmm. Nebraska, I'm like, oh, here we go, <laughs> right? But when I get a call from Vancouver, British Columbia, where I, where I live, I'm like, oh, this is probably somebody who knows me or at least was told to call me for some reason, so I'll answer the phone. If go high level, because I understand that you know some people in the beginning, go high level is a daunting price tag, I get it. Then Instagram calling is your last resort. That's fair. Okay. And from all the campaigns that you've kind of overviewed, what are like the like the top you know three to five niches that you've seen just like the highest booking rate, highest reply rate in? This is gonna sound interesting, and I don't know why, but I find that woman-dominated niches perform better. The med spas, okay. real estate, but like female realtors, we always book more demos from this with female realtors than male realtors. Uh, there was this one niche that was, they helped like staffing, it was like staffing nurses. It was like some nursing, they were crushing it with mm -hmm. this. So I don't actually know why, mm -hmm. definitely female dominated niches work better with this system. Okay. So med spa would do pretty pretty yeah. well probably on the IGDMs. Yeah. Okay, okay. And let's say that I'm I really want like it's working really well and I want to scale this up and I'm you know I start buying accounts, I start reactivating, you know, old aged accounts. What should I do in terms of the profile picture and the name of the account? Should I, you know, get a royalty free face shot and then do like an AI generated name or you know what's the best way of The name that? should always be the same name as the person who's calling them. So if you have a setter team, okay. and this is granted, this is much farther down the line. If you have a setter team, creating an outreach yeah. account for each individual setter. If you, the entrepreneur, are making the phone calls, create five accounts. Like that Christian kid that we've kind of talked about a little bit, he has like four or five outreach accounts, all mm -hmm. of which are his own name. Okay, so you could, you could, so, so you know how like Facebook, they have a bunch of rules Instagram, where it's as whatever. soon as you can't create a duplicate account, Instagram, it's free for all. You could make five yeah. accounts with your name yeah. and your, and your face. Okay. Okay, cool. Cool. So I think that's about it, you know, for the questions that come to the top of my head. If, you know, the viewers, if they want to find you, where's the best place to go ahead Just, and check you I'm out? Just, I'm Dylan Wilson, YouTube, all platforms. Like, um, I'm in a phase right now of giving back, providing value. I'm trying to grow brands. I legit have nothing to sell to the general population right now. Everything that I'm offering right now is closed, application only type stuff. So I'm in a phase of giving back. Uh, hit me up on Instagram, hit me up on YouTube. Um, I'm gonna start doing free calls once a week if you wanna hop on a call and get a little bit more specific um, help. But all this stuff can be found through my various social media networks, which all my usernames are at I'm Dylan Wilson.